Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to welcome you all, at least virtually, here from the Academy of the Konrad Adenauer Foundation in Berlin. We are pleased that we as Adenauer Foundation once again can make our own contribution to the yearly Raisina Dialogue with a uh, panel dealing with the question, the end of multilateralism, a networked global order. And um, it's unavoidable that I start with a remark that um, it's now eight weeks since not only Ukraine is confronted with a war, with a military aggression by Russia, but Europe in total feels confronted with an aggression to its order of peace and freedom founded on treaties and agreements being signed by all European states, including Russia. So we have a couple of open questions directly and ind indirectly confronted with the um, uh, actual developments in a particular part of uh, uh, Europe and dealing with perspectives which have to do with the relationship between European states, between individual European and non-European states, in this case particularly between Germany and uh, India, and the once again open question whether at all and under which conditions multilateral structures could be established or have been established for only some time or whatever we might think on the present uh, situation. It's a particular honor that uh, we have the Indian ambassador to Germany uh, uh, with us. Uh, uh, welcome uh, uh, Mr. Paratineni and um, without further remarks I would uh, like to invite you for an opening statement to our um, uh, discussion. Uh, thank you, Professor Lemmert, uh, uh, Ms. Shanti D'Souza, Mr. Hart, thank you for joining. Um, I think I want to thank uh, the uh, Konrad Adenauer Foundation for uh, uh, hosting Raisina Dialogue in Berlin. This has emerged as um, one of the premier geopolitical and geoeconomic oriented uh, uh, get-togethers uh, globally. And I think uh, the fact that we're meeting here today also attest to the importance uh, that uh, uh, the Raisina Dialogue has in the d discussions that are taking place uh, uh, globally. I think um, um, Germany to, to us is a very important partner. Uh, it is an important partner in Europe, the, the most important economic uh, investment and trade partner. Uh, it is also one of our most important partners worldwide. This year is special. We celebrate 75 years of India's independence. We also celebrate 70 years of the relations between uh, India and Germany. Uh, it is almost 22 years since we have embarked on a strategic partnership between our two countries. Um, as we speak, we also look forward to uh, uh, very uh, fruitful discussions this year of uh, the next, uh, the, the sixth uh, India-Germany intergovernmental consultations. Um, I can say without hesitation that Germany is a very important partner for scientific, technological, and research collaboration. It has been one of our first partners in higher education when the University of Aachen had helped establish the, uh, uh, the Indian Institute of Technology in, uh, in Madras. Um, we have today over 30,000 students in Germany uh, in various uh, um, areas of STEM disciplines uh, and doing advanced research. The scientific and technological collaborations have been critical in enabling our industry and in en enabling our own scientific research. Uh, what opportunities do I see for our relationship? I think um, first and foremost, um, the commitments made by our two countries um, at Glasgow for, uh, on, on, on climate provide a, a perfect opportunity to further 
our uh, uh, collaboration so that we have uh, a green and a sustainable development partnership between our two countries. This would add an important dimension to our uh, strategic partnership. Um, I also see huge opportunities between our two countries in uh, taking forward our collaboration on digitalization, uh, uh, in taking forward uh, uh, our collaboration in fintech and in startups. Uh, many of these areas are already subjects of great collaboration between uh, our two countries. Um, I think um, the context of India-Germany partnership is also embedded in the larger context of the India-EU strategic partnership. We have had the President of the EU in India yesterday. She had a, a great meeting with the Prime Minister and she addressed uh, uh, the Raisina dialogue. Uh, I think our strategic partnership with the EU and the newly announced uh, decision that uh, India and the EU will go through with a trade uh, and a technology initiative, I think uh, attests to the importance uh, of uh, our strategic partnership. Um, yes, we are facing a, a, a critical uh, situation since the last two years after the pandemic. Uh, across the world, uh, the, the uh, realities have changed and we are fast adapting to it. Um, uh, this is also a time when gro globally countries are collaborating with each other to face these challenges. Uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, India, Germany and other countries have helped each other uh, to uh, overcome the challenges posed by the pandemic uh, in developing vaccines and producing medicines to deal with it. Um, today, as we speak, uh, India is uh, um, helping countries deal with critical shortages in food uh, in North Africa, in, in the Middle East, uh, as uh, they deal uh, with the challenges. Uh, so I think uh, uh, India continues to be uh, 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 an important uh, partner, working together with friends and uh, uh, facing the challenges uh, uh, that the world faces. Um, as for the uh, topic of discussion, of course, I look forward to a very substantive uh, uh, discussion between the panelists today, and I'm sure uh, your, your discussions uh, would, would uh, contribute to the uh, overall outcomes of the Raisina Dialogue. Thank you very much for Salamat. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador. I am um, particularly grateful for your uh, kind a description of the particular relationship between our two countries and uh, perhaps I may add that uh, uh, the Adenauer Foundation um, uh, is um, uh, engaged in uh, this cooperation since more than uh, five decades. Already a couple of years ago we have celebrated the 50th anniversary of the uh, engagement of the Adenauer Foundation in India and I remember quite well that on both sides we expressed our interest in even intensify the cooperation which already exists. And I have no doubt that we will particularly address your remark on the strategic relationship between India and Germany and India and the European Union, whatever this might mean under the given circumstances. So I should now um, uh, present uh, the two partners in uh, this uh, uh, debate. Um, it's a pleasure that I have um, uh, an active politician and uh, a, a political analyst for addressing the same um, uh, uh, questions and uh, perspectives. Uh, Jürgen Hart, uh, who is member of the German Bundestag since 2009, and uh, uh, the acting spokesman on foreign affairs of the parliamentary group of the uh, uh, Christian Democratic uh, 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 Union. And Mrs. de Souza, um, uh, who is president and uh, founder of uh, Mantraya, an independent research forum with a long academic and research um, uh, career on different places like Singapore and in Australia and India and um, uh, United States, uh, now Germany. And um, uh, so we have obviously not identical perspectives on similar uh, questions. And I would like uh, to start with uh, uh, Jürgen Hart what does, in your understanding, strategic relationship means in times of war? 
Thank you, Professor Lammert. Uh, thank you, Excellency, and thank you, uh, Mrs. De Souza, for having the chance to talk uh, with you about the German Indian relations in those challenging times. Uh, um, I'm a member of the um, German Indian Parliamentary um, Friendship Group since 2009, since I started in the Deutsche Bundestag. And I was on a nine day trip in India uh, right before the breakout of uh, Corona. And I hope to go back to India in summer because I think uh, also on the planetarium level we need close contacts between um, uh, the, the um, politicians in our both countries. Concerning a strategic relationship, I think we um, have to, to state, uh, looking to the uh, current situation of the world, that the strategic cooperation with India is uh, vital, uh, vital for Europe and for Germany as the um, um, biggest economically biggest country in Europe. Um, but uh, that, that uh, this strategic, strategic approach and strategic cooperation should not um, uh, be focused only on some topics. Um, as Ambassador mentioned, I think it's very important that we work close together on climate change, on uh, preventing climate change. Um, we are working close together on economic and uh, scientific cooperation. Um, uh, but I think we also should uh, look closer to the question of uh, strategic cooperation in the field of foreign and security policy. And um, when I was in India uh, two years ago, we talked a lot about the challenge from China. Um, I have uh, the impression that India is uh, concerned about uh, what China is doing um, in, in, with uh, stationing of military forces and building up harbors around the um, in Indian uh, subcontinent. And uh, also what China is doing with uh, the Better Road Initiative, um, which uh, 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 harms the interest of India uh, in uh, uh, the northwestern region. Um, but we're uh, uh, looking to that, that we have uh, common uh, uh, challenges on international and global approaches, and uh, that we both stay close to uh, international law and rule of international law, like stated in the United Nations uh, um, uh, Carter and, and resolutions of the Security Council. We had some concerns about the fact that India um, uh, use it as a, the way of abstention in the, in the Security Council of United Nations uh, when it came to the point to um, um, uh, 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 blame Russia for um, uh, aggressive behavior to uh, Ukraine and to that um, attack on Ukraine territory, which is uh, clearly <coughs> and no question behind this is which is clearly against international law and. <coughs> We, we expect to have India on the side of the free world and of this, on the side of the international um, order um, and uh, for a big and important country like India, an abstention in the Security Council is, uh, from my point of view, not the right way to do. I think, <coughs> sorry for that, I think, I think um, India uh, should, should uh, use the chance to um, um, uh, think about its own uh, security interests, um, which are also uh, uh, harmed, uh, potentially um, are harmed by, by China and Russia, and um, uh, would be a, a good option for, for India to come closer to the international community uh, who stays um, to, uh, which stays to international law and uh, the rule of law um, in the United Nations. And I think and hope that uh, the discussion between, between our two governments um, in the next days uh, might um, also uh, tackle this point because we cannot exclude um, uh, the more controversial points uh, between our two countries um, uh, when we want to increase our relations and friendship. And I think among good friends, it's also possible to talk openly about uh, uh, such challenges. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. D'Souza, what is in your perception the Indian understanding of the ongoing war in Europe? Obviously, there is not an identical perspective between countries like Germany, but not only Germany, France, Italy, Great Britain, no longer a member of the European Union, as far as this conflict is concerned, and a major country like India. Well, I think it's an important question uh, to understand uh, what Indians really view Europe as. Uh, one is that uh, there's a lot of potential India could have greater and stronger relationship with Europe, but it hasn't really occurred. And secondly, I think it's Ukraine has been a distant conflict. 
it's not immediate in the neighborhood. And third is also there's a lot of geopolitical reconfiguration and realignment which is occurring. If you know uh, what Ukraine really brought to the forefront in terms of the world order is a changing world order. It is not what we saw in terms of what analysts would call it as humanitarian intervention or democratic peace dividends or any kind of uh, engagement with Ukraine. The response from different countries was very different. Uh, you see how Europe uh, reacted and how U.S. reacted to this is very different from countries like India, Brazil, South Africa have reacted. Now, uh, I'm not speaking for the government of India. I'm not a spokesperson for the Ministry of External Affairs. But you must understand that India is located in such a situation where it has close relationship with Russia. There is a dependency there, especially in terms of the military uh, supplies and uh, armaments. Uh, second, it also has the gas dependency which even Europe has. So having said that, we have to understand that the constraints India had uh, put it in such a position that it went in for abstention. But uh, also the, you should take cognizance of the fact that India did at time and again ask Russia to revive its position, to revoke its position and it did see it as an act of aggression. So there is a very fine line here between being a normative power and in the real politic world where you have your strategic constraints which does not allow you to, to be that normative power and that has happened with other countries in the world as well. And in addition to this fact that China is a rising power and Russia is seen as a declining power, we see this cataclysmic uh, events occurring where it is disruptive in a lot many ways. So what Russia did according to the Indians was not seen as an act of aggression for the own reason that they had their own limitation in terms of protecting their interests. But time and again they have taken it up with Russia but Russia as you know would not uh, listen to India on that count. Now the, here in the important point is if that occurs, what happens to countries like India and Germany where there is tremendous potential of building up a partnership on shared understanding. Now if you look at that strategic partnership which India and Germany had in 2000 and, and now we are in 2022, we have convergence of interests but we have hardly worked on issues together. Uh, we have rightly pointed out that in terms of education, scientific collaboration, climate issues, there is a lot of understanding. But the key uh, fundamental issues in the foreign and security policies, uh, I think there is hardly been convergence. Uh, Indo-Pacific has emerged as a theater of competition. Germany did send a frigate and it was seen as a good step. But beyond that, what? Uh, in terms of the armaments, in terms of defense cooperation, mm -hmm. in terms of intelligence cooperation or even counterterrorism cooperation. Uh, one example is because I work in Afghanistan, I also know that India and Germany could have done so much together there and even can do together. So identifying those areas where India uh, and Germany can work together is one. Secondly, building those platforms of collaboration is second. So uh, my fundamental response to India's position on Ukraine is that it is based on its own interest as all countries do in international relation and it is a realist perspective which ultimately rules. And secondly, because of the fluidity, I think India is taking its time to take on a position. So if Europe makes that outreach and if Germany makes that outreach of having convergence of interests of dealing dealing with threats which are emerging in the uh, multipolar world order now, then I think we would have a greater collaboration. Many analysts in uh, Europe and in the United States as well uh, address the question, what is the problem uh, which Russia has with Ukraine? Does Russia feel threatened by Ukraine? And the answer is militarily, obviously not. But politically, it might feel threatened by democratic structures, by developments in the civil society in Ukraine, which could affect Russia. And the regime obviously is not interested in such a similar development in um, uh, the own uh, uh, country. So again, reflecting strategic relationship between Germany and India. Germany and India are functioning reliable democracies. Russia is not. If it is not only a fantasy but a concrete uh, uh, perception that uh, what is threatened is democracy, is it too much? 
to expect other countries to make priorities in interests and where in your understanding is the priority for democracy compared with economic cooperation, education, science cooperation and other points which we have mentioned? Well, I think there are different views of democracy. What you see democracy in Asia or South Asia is very different from what you see it in Western Europe. So there are different visions of democracy. One is a very local indigenous process and uh, uh, wherein uh, the democratic structures take on their own forms. And that's what you see it in Asia. So if you have to prioritize, there is a difference in how you view dem democracies itself. You know, there is democracy dividend, which is useful in terms of understanding the Western view of democracy. But when you look at the Asian view, it's very divergent. And there are no perfect democracies. So given that position, uh, you might say that Ukraine could be one example where they were trying this democratic example, but it didn't work. But from the Indian perspective, it's like there's no perfect democracies and India is not into democracy promotion. So having said that, this is the largest democracy in the world. And it has that normative power of using democracy as a potential for building relationship with the rest of the world. But it's not caught, uh, it's always shied away from using that. So maybe it's time for the West and especially for Europe to make this point that we have something in common and we can use this and thereby have a you know, coalition of democratic or uh, like-minded countries working together to put international pressure on an aggressor like Russia. Uh, and you can use various forums. It may not be the United Nations. It can be through various platforms which could be built. It could be a convergence of democratic countries coming together and building a democratic uh, coalition. So, I mean, these are ideas which are floating about. But the point is that when we talk about democracy and you start pointing fingers at each other, then you know there's no democracy which is perfect. But on the other hand, you also know that there are certain principles on which democratic orders work. And maybe if you can understand each other and build that convergence, then it would help in avoiding conflicts in the future. Uh, Mr. Hart, you have um, uh, mentioned the abstention of India in uh, uh, several decisions of the United uh, Nations as far as this conflict is concerned. And obviously you feel uncomfortable with the Indian uh, uh, vote. My point is that not only India abstained, but also Brazil or South Africa, again countries um, which Germany has identified as not only countries of particular significance, but countries with a strategic relationship to Germany. So once again, what does strategic relationship means in real terms? Do we overestimate what it could mean? Really? We have kind tone. Sorry. Um, 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 I, I agree um, on that, what was said also by Mrs. D'Souza, that public, probably uh, the view on what is democratic structures and how uh, do they work, they're different cultures in different uh, countries. But uh, I think on the, uh, the strategic uh, strategic partnership uh, that uh, does not exclude some sectors of uh, political cooperation, because it is a strategic partnership and not only a, a, a partnership in some sectors, uh, has to be based on uh, some uh, principles and common values. And uh, uh, I think of huge importance, not only for democracy, but also for um, um, uh, economic welfare and uh, a prosperous country is, uh, other things that are closely linked to democratic processes, which is uh, free free media, which is um, uh, free uh, behavior of the individuals, and which is uh, rule of law um, uh, of private people um, against uh, uh, action of state uh, on, on uh, independent courts. And uh, um, all that is necessary to develop a country and all that is necessary to develop, it, to develop strategic co cooperation. If you want to have investment in a country like South Africa or India or Brazil or Germany or uh, Hungary or Spain, you have to be sure that your investment is secured by um, a, 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 a set of, of regulations and, and of orders and 
uh, rules that you have uh, can uh, be um, uh, and you can trust on that uh, uh, judges independent judges uh, uh, will be decide on a fair basis uh, on the basis of that um, a, a rule um, if you are harmed by 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 uh, some in, in that guest country and uh, i think if if um, a, a state is not standing clear to the principles of um, um, uh, international order and rule of law on international level this uh, raises questions question marks on the question what is about uh, the security of rule of law in that country and i'm sure that india is able to um, uh, to prove that uh, um, uh, India is a, is a state where rule of law is respected and uh, um, investment is secured and, and also the behavior of scientists and students if we do exchange and and and. Um, but uh, 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 the question mark on the other hand is why then in this case India does not decide to agree on the resolution of the United Nations uh, but to, to, to use the abstention if was it only blackmailing or pressure by Russia, this is something that uh, I would not appreciate, but I, I would ca probably can accept. Uh, but if it is um, more behind that, if it is a, a principal decision not to be involved in such uh, conflicts about uh, international rule of law, um, uh, I would have my concerns with that. And uh, uh, Mrs. D'Souza said, D'Souza said um, it is, was mainly due to the fact that uh, uh, India is very uh, 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 much depending in, in gas, for example, and, and industry goods uh, from Russia. Um, uh, okay, but uh, 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 it should be clear that there is no principal decision of India not to stay to the international rule of law. Um, what conclusions? In operative terms, does Germany draw or should Germany draw from uh, this war and its uh, implications? It's a question to me? Yeah. Um, it, it, I think we have uh, to, to face the challenge that uh, several sectors of our foreign security policy, but also of our economic policy and other fields, needs to be readjusted. I think we first have the view that we need more um, uh, security um, uh, efforts in Germany and in NATO on the European level. Um, Germany decided to do that and uh, the opposite party, CDU, CSU, now in opposite to the acting government, will support the process of more investment in the um, armed forces. But we also have to um, uh, rebalance questions like in energy security. We will never import as much gas from Russia as we did in the past, even if the situation might be um, uh, 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 more relaxed between Russia and, and Europe. We will never uh, we like to come into a situation very so much uh, depending on, on Russian gas as it is now in Germany with close to 50% of our gas supply coming from Russia. Uh, this is something that we, we need to readjust together with our European partners. We also have to um, think about our economic relations to the rest of the world. I think we can, uh, we have to use the instrument of uh, trade agreements, uh, ambitious trade agreements and investment agreements with other countries um, uh, 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 more uh, uh, faster and, and more, unga more engaged than we do now. We are sometimes too much looking on the special European uh, 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 gold standard questions on trade issues. I think we should look more on uh, strategic approaches or the strategic side of such a trade agreement. And from my point of view, it's a very good message to hear that we will now want to restart uh, the process on negotiating such an agreement with India. I think I, I would also like to support all politics that is going on the uh, new restart on that um, Mercosur agreement with Latin American states. We also have to refocus our um, uh, the policy concerning um, um, independence or resilience uh, uh, of our industry against um, um, harming of supply chains uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, sometimes political issues and sometimes uh, um, uh, 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 Cases that are not done by, by, by human beings, but by nature, like, like COVID or like um, uh, natural disasters, 
that we have to have a closer eye on uh, a more independent uh, and more um, diversified um, uh, supply chain for German key industry. Um, um, looking to uh, all that needs to be readjusted, there's nearly no field of politics where we can continue as we did. And one, one, uh, one is, so to say, uh, the headline above all, uh, nothing can do um, in a standalone solution, solution for Germany, nothing can be done in a standalone uh, 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 approach from the European Union. We need partners in the world, and India is one of our most preferred um, partners outside Europe to, um, uh, to make, make a better world in the future. Uh, Mrs. D'Souza, you have rightly mentioned that this war in Ukraine is from India comparatively far away. Um, does nevertheless also India draw conclusions from this war and this conflict with strategic partners in Europe? And if at all, which ones? Well, I think... Uh what India can draw in terms of lessons is, one is to understand that uh, Europe by itself, as you see today, is not very united the way it used to be, right? So the response hasn't been very united. So one is, uh, I think when uh, you come to push comes to shove kind of a situation, you make choices. So one question is about India's strategic choice, whether it'll make that strategic choice, moving away from strategic autonomy, the position it maintains. Second is, to be a normative power, when it has its great power aspirations, to stand for principles and ideas and vision of what it wants the future world order to be, especially when you have aggressions occurring on this side. And third is also to understand that India also has countries like China at its border. And um, given the fact that there's a greater convergence now between Russia and China, uh, India cannot take positions as they were before. And thereby, it needs new partners. And uh, though it, you did see a little bit of convergence with US developing, particularly with the contestation occurring in the Indo-Pacific with China, but that again had shifted a bit. So there's a lot of fluidity. So in terms of lessons with what this war has actually brought to India is the fact that you do have to take certain positions at certain point of time. And there is a concerted effort inside India of making that position known. It's just the ge geopolitical and the national interests at this point of time, which doesn't let India do that. So my sense is that given the fact that, you know, uh, it, though it's a distant war and a far-flung war, it could occur in the neighborhood. It could occur anywhere uh, closer home for India. And how would India react to that? Would, would it have a kind of a, a template which looks at interventions of this sort, which I think democracy should work on? Uh, is there a kind of post-conflict situation where you have a situation like Afghanistan which is coming out of a conflict or getting into another conflict? So we are looking at a situation where the lessons in terms of uh, the war in Ukraine is, I think, understanding that we have to take a, India will have to take positions at a certain point of time. India will have to have a convergence with other countries on key issues and uh, take that position to a point where it will be useful in the long term. So what India is looking now is in short term, but my view is that if it works with other countries, it could have a longer term vision of building a new global order and also having templates and kind of uh, multilateral structures and institutional mechanisms whereby there are checks and balance why countries don't get into this kind of adventurism. Because what happened uh, between Russia and Ukraine could occur between India and China at one, some point of time. Talking about China, what is your expectation? Um, as far as Chinese lessons are concerned, what do you expect uh, China will uh, uh, draw conclusions from these experiences? I think Rather in terms of feeling encouraging to find separate approaches to follow individual interests or rather to look for common structures, agreed structures of a global order? Well, uh, I think China is drawing its own lessons in terms of uh, adventurism, which could be Taiwan or any other theater. And they're watching this conflict very closely. I think one is they're looking at the way 
uh, Russian aggression went ahead with its military and uh, strategy and the second is more in terms of the public relations and the strategic communications and the media which played an important role. But in terms of understanding the Chinese perspective of whether they want a different global order and whether they are going to work on multilateral structures, I think China is using the space to uh, enhance its position. And I don't see it getting into any cooperative structures now because there's so much of fluidity. And there is a kind of ascendancy in terms of the Chinese power potential as you see. If you can see Russia as a declining power, you see China as a rising power. And thereby there is this uh, disruptive shocks in the international system. And thereby China is only going to embolden its position. And I'm not very sure whether it's going to get into any cooperative structures in the days to come. Um, uh, Mr. Hart, talking about China, we are once again talking on a strategic relationship. And once again, we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean? What is your expectation? What the immediate or further conclusions on the Chinese side could or will be? This is a very interesting question because we have different uh, opinions on that uh, in the uh, scientific uh, world in, in Germany and Europe. Um, my personal view is that um, it was a mistake for the president of China to um, encourage um, uh, Putin uh, to to that step into Ukraine. Um, I think he was informed about before and he didn't stop him. And he now sees a situation which is not, not also not fine for China. Um, European Union is today much closer together than it was eight weeks before. Um, it was uh, impressive for me to see how um, uh, the heads of state of the European Union and the Commission were able to, to fix uh, some um, uh, uh, strong sanctions against Russia between, in, within uh, 72 hours or so. Um, uh, second, uh, there's a, a stronger alliance between North America and Europe uh, 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 due to the challenge, uh, uh, the, the attack on, on Ukraine by Russia is also for, for NATO. And a third, that we have um, uh, now a case where we, we um, question mark some development of globalization. And as it was, for example, with Russia, we, we, we trusted into uh, good economic relations to Russia and um, a, 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 a permanent abstention of, uh, a, a, of, of um, an aggressive specific behavior. Now we are much more concerned about uh, in, 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 in depending too much in some economic fields uh, on, on one country or region, uh, which is with gas uh, in Russia, but probably with um, 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 uh, 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 technology um, uh, things from China. I think at the, one of the lessons we have learned from, from China, from, from the situation uh, now is uh, concerning China, that we will not be too much uh, uh, rely on, on, uh, on uh, long-lasting uh, and um, secure supply chains uh, to China. Um, uh, we will establish in Europe um, some some uh, economic development in fields where we see uh, uh, core uh, capabilities um, of our engineering that needs to be uh, kept in Europe. Uh, therefore, the, the the plan of China to conquer the whole world on a smooth way by um, overwhelming us all with uh, a strong uh, economic superpower and uh, um, a big smile uh, on the face of the president. Uh, this strategy is uh, 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 harmed by that, what, what our experience is now. And I hope that there, this opens also new fields of uh, talks and negotiations with China concerning their behavior in international um, uh, 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 in the international arena, especially in the um, uh, 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 Southeast uh, Seas and, and uh, in the region um, uh, of Southeast Asia, um, uh, Japan, um, uh, uh, Australia, uh, New Zealand, and other countries. And therefore, um, this time um, uh, change we had with the uh, question of the attack of Russia on Ukraine on the 24th of February, will also um, have an impact on our relation to China and our behavior towards China, which is not 100% <laughs> um, uh, 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 where, where, where China cannot be 100% fine with looking to its own strategy uh, towards Europe and North America. Um, Mrs. De Souza has just blamed Europe for not being uh, united. And you have referred to the um, astonishing amount of unity 
in European uh, standards being expressed uh, by the last summit, uh, for example, when uh, 27 member states uh, expressed their unity on this uh, uh, subject, and not only the unity within the European Union, but also between the European Union and its member states and the United States. And of course, the question is not only legitimate, if the developments in Ukraine would have occurred at all, if Europe would have been as united the years uh, before. Um, a question which nobody uh, can authentically uh, answer, but it is at least um, a legitimate um, uh, speculation. My question, uh, uh, Mr. Hart, and uh, to Mrs. de Souza as well, um, uh, refers to the relationship between trade relations and political um, uh, uh, relations. In both cases, um, uh, Russia and China, we have observed a strong development in economic relations. The trade uh, uh, amount is bigger than ever before. And neither in the case of Russia nor in the case of China, this has resulted in a nearer political uh, uh, position um, addressing structures of a global order. Again, have we probably overestimated economic relations as the basic for relationship between countries, societies, states? Um, looking to the current situation with Russia, um, we see that uh, the close economic cooperation we had, especially concerning um, energy supply, doesn't hinder Russia to be aggressive against Ukraine. Um, it's not. Uh, it's also harming uh, Russian interests a lot. We will see in the next months and years, but they did. But this is not, uh, so to say, the uh, uh, total total um, uh, negotiation or an, 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 an total uh, um, uh, 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 counter argument against uh, uh, the the issue to have close economic relations. Um, I think uh, countries that are able to have good economic relations are uh, much better able also to have political talks. But we also we have to have in mind that um, uh, more than maybe in the past, um, a good economic relations has to be have to be based on also um, trustful political relations. Um, I already mentioned the question of the rule of law. If the uh, if um, a government in a country cannot secure um, a rule of law, it is very difficult for foreign investment uh, and for foreign business people, and also for tourists and journalists and and, and uh, students and uh, scientists uh, to go into that country and to live there with their families and to develop um, to help to develop the country or to to increase the relations. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, something that we have to have in mind. And uh, from my point of view. I hope uh, to have a situation uh, with India also in the future where we can uh, trust on um, uh, the rule law of law in India and we can trust on the strong commitment of India to international um, law um, uh, 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 though that we can uh, build on, on that basis can build up um, the strategic partnership with India. Um, uh, but trust, uh, to, uh, trust uh, uh, to trust into the uh, other government is one of the core pillars of a strategic partnership, and uh, therefore it's important that our two governments talk together. Um, uh, I hope also about those those more uh, crucial questions, and they will come to a good result uh, for the future uh, of the relations of our two countries. Mrs. Tisuza, with or without multilateral structures, the situation in Asia is at least as complicated as the situation in Europe. And in so far, we have similar questions for future perspectives on both uh, continents. Which role, in your understanding, can Germany play, if at all, in the future development of India and that part of the world? Well, I think uh, Germany can play a more important role in the socio-political sphere. 
beyond the strategic. Uh, I think uh, in terms of building uh, the health infrastructure, education, agriculture, uh, actually in this uh, areas, India, uh, Germany can focus more because this is areas where India, uh, India and the rest of the Asian countries need assistance, especially the developing world, the third world countries as you know it. But uh, I think beyond looking at just foreign and security and strategic policies of these countries, I think people to people contact, business to uh, B2B contacts, business to business contacts are more essential. And that's where I think Germany needs to invest more because if you ask anyone in India much about Europe, there's hardly any knowledge in terms of understanding what Europe really is. You know, you get a new image which is quite divided. And uh, fortunately, I think Ukraine unified Europe in such a way that it looks like you look more unified now. But the f fact is there are differences. But there's a lack of understanding of what Germany is, what the country is. And I think so we need a greater interaction from academics, from parliamentarians, from politicians, from people for in very ordinary fields uh, so that you have that greater space developed. So once you develop that space where there's a convergence between people, then the governments are propelled. So it's not necessary that governments have to sign agreements and grand strategies, but uh, ag uh, agreements in that sort, but more of a uh, space where people can interact and build that collaboration, which is more important and useful in the long term. And those bridges are not seem to be there. So I think Germany needs to invest more in the civil space, in the socio-political space. And also, I think this uh, idea that we invest only in the capital. Beyond the capital, we look at other states in India, like uh, there are other states where you can look at other concepts like para-diplomacy, where there's a greater devolution of center, the foreign policy, or you're looking at a twinning concept of having cities, having greater co cooperation. That pays off more than having just a st strategic agreement where you have a list of things and you don't know what the achievements are at the end of it. So I think it's always important to have a small building blocks to relationship, build them at such a level and then have a convergence of interests whereby you tie people in a mutually beneficial framework. Well, I thank you for your contributions, uh, Mrs. De Souza, uh, uh, Mr. Hart. Um, I thank all the observers and participants for your uh, interest and best greetings and wishes from Berlin to India. Thanks.